Impotency is the most common sexual complaint of men who are in what is called the male version of menopause. This problem is defined as the inability to have an erection that gives sufficient satisfaction to both partners during sex or the inability to sustain an erection. A short while ago, a drug called Viagra was developed to treat a common male sexual disorder known as impotency. The drug, despite various instances of side effects, has garnered much popularity. Impotency has been something which has haunted men worldwide for a very long time. Today's episode deals with the causes and methods of treatment, according to Oriental Medicine, of impotency. Generally, Western medicine divides the causes of impotency into the psychological, which is due to psychological burdens, and the constitutional, which is due to physical defects. Constitutional impotency is a symptom common among middle and old males who have sexual problems. It is caused by defects in the internal secretion system that governs the psychological side of the male sexual functions, as well as defects in the nervous and blood-related systems. Besides such defects, geriatric diseases such as diabetes can be another cause of impotency. On the other hand, Oriental medicine defines the cause of impotency as damage in the muscles that surround the penis due to overspending of yang gi or male gi. Oriental medicine regards normal erections as the result of proper functioning of three types of organs that govern the male gi and vigor, namely the kidney-related organs, the liver, and the heart. Among these, the most important would be the kidney-related organs, which are collectively called shin. Shin is a system that includes the womb or the male sexual organs, and in the case of males, it refers to the part where semen is stored. The liver governs our muscles, ligaments, eyes, and fingernails. It is closely related to the muscles that surround the penis. Also, the kyungdak, related to the liver, flows through the area around the reproductive organs and thus has a great influence on male sexual functions. This area is also related to the functions of the heart, which governs the psychological system. It is only when the three types of organs are in harmony that the body's normal sexual functions are possible. So in oriental medicine, if any of the kidney-related organs, liver or heart, has defects or starts to weaken, that is when sexual problems such as impotency steps in. Another cause would be drug abuse overdosage of drugs that control blood pressure, suppress depression, or calm the nerves are some examples. Too much smoking or alcohol can influence sexual function as well. People who are obese or severely underweight due to improper nourishment can also have sexual problems. Oriental medicine's treatment for impotency is divided into moxibustion, medicinal therapy, and acupressure therapy. The overall aim is to check the condition of the organs and kyungrak that govern erection and put to right any imbalance and strengthen any weak parts. The most common form of treatment would be medicinal therapy. Medicinal therapy aims at replenishing the patient's vigor in male ki. The kidney-related organs, collectively called shin, are especially responsible for the male's erection and gi. So impotency patients are given medicines that strengthen the shin, namely yongyong gobondan, which strengthens weakened male gi and stimulates the sexual nerves. The main ingredients are umyongwak, which replenishes male gi and works as an invigorative to stimulate male gi. And yuk jongyong, shaped like the penis, strengthens weak constitutions and replenishes blood. Besides these herbs, there is also paguk, which strengthens the muscles and controls the concentration of semen. Patients who have oversensitive nerves and are largely influenced by psychological factors are given a brew called kwibitang. These herbs relieve stress by working on the heart and also relieve tension. 
Sok Jangpo clears the head and chest and strengthens the heart. Bekbokshin calms the nerves and enhances the flow of liquids in the body. Wonji calms the heart and clears the mind. In addition, Gugija is used to strengthen muscles related to the sexual organs. Gugija enhances the functions of the liver and shin, and so is added in appropriate amounts to the bruise to facilitate the male sexual function. There are oriental medical methods of treatment for impotency, such as acupressure, which you can administer at home. Let's take a look at these personal methods of treatment. The essential principle of oriental medicine lies in correcting any unbalanced state in the body and maintaining the joints and organs in peace and harmony. So even if the problem is a sexual one, treatment starts with acupressure therapy on the spine, which is a central pillar of the body. Applying pressure to the area connected to the second and third vertebrae is a method that stimulates the kyunglak, related to the kidneys, and is thus an effective treatment for impotency. Repeating the act of pressing down hard in this area will help the patient sustain an erection. Next, applying acupressure on the big toe will strengthen the muscles in the penis. The principle of oriental medicine dictates that the liver kyungrak, which is connected to the big toe, is in turn connected to the sexual organs. Repeatedly pressing down on the tetun hyo is in the big toe will stimulate the liver kyungrak and thus strengthen the liver and ligaments. In males, this will harden the muscles in the penis, and in females, it will quickly contract the vagina and thus enhance sexual function. The same effect can be achieved by standing with your big toe raised. Next is moxibustion using suk or mugwort. In oriental medicine, the center of the body is called tanjan, which is the abdominal area. Moxibustion using suk is applied to the kwan wan hyo or the acupuncture point located in the tanjan, and this stimulates the shin kyung rak. Above all, effects can be multiplied if the treatment is carried out faithfully and continuously. Mental stability and confidence are just as important as strengthening the kidney-related organs and the liver, which directly govern the sexual organs. So it is an essential part of the treatment for the patient to have an active attitude in life. Another important factor in treatment would be the active cooperation of the patient's sex partner. To overcome impotency and lead a healthy sex life, normal functioning of the nervous system and proper blood circulation are important factors in the prevention of impotency. Swimming is particularly good for blood circulation and strengthening the lower half of the body. This prevents the kidney-related organs from weakening. Also, exercising your neck by bending it in all four directions or pressing on the chun and the pung at the back of the neck are good habits. The result is stimulating the hormone secretion system to enhance hormone secretion. Include in your diet meat or fish, garlic and spring onions, scallions and carrots. Eat moderate amounts of fruits that are rich in vitamins and minerals such as grapes and tomatoes. A proper diet is another good way of preventing impotency. There are essential elements of domestic happiness which go beyond individual physical health to one's sexual fantasy life. Today we have discussed the causes and the methods of treatment for impotency as seen from the Oriental Medical Approach. Until next time, this has been Oriental Medical Digest.